Hello traders, in today's video we're going to be talking about MVRV from Santiment. This site is a site I've wanted to cover for a very long time. Uh, the owners have put in a ton of work into this and there's some really cool things to cover. So with that, let's get into today's video. Hello traders, before we start on MVRV, the discount for my Delta Neutral course ends tonight. So if you are thinking about getting it, and it's still Friday, probably now is the best time to do so. That discount is going to end at midnight UTC, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, with that, let's get into MVRV. MVRV is the market cap divided by the realized cap. Really what this is going to be telling us is are most people who bought during a certain time period profitable or unprofitable when they bought Bitcoin? So it looks at the increase or the decrease in realized cap versus the increase decrease in market cap. And this is going to be able to tell us, you know, are, are people uh, hurting or are people, uh, you know, euphoric because they're in profit. Now, what this specific indicator that I'm going to be talking about today shows the difference between the short term and the medium term MVRV. What this means, as you can see here, Blue is short term and orange is medium term, 60 day versus 70 day. Now, when the seven day is far above the 60 day, well, what does that mean? That means that many more that many traders who are now opening positions on Bitcoin, uh, spot positions on Bitcoin last seven days are more profitable than traders who have opened positions on Bitcoin in the last 60 days. Now, when the orange is above the blue, that means that people who have opened in the last 60 days are more profitable than people who have opened in the last seven days. Let me show you guys how this uh, MVRV works on the seven day. This is the shortest time frame, and this is a pretty short time frame, even though I'm calling it medium term. That's just something to know because I am more of a short term trader. But when you look at this indicator, you may want to use higher uh, time frames. That might help you a little bit more, but this is just my style. In green, you have the price of Bitcoin, and in blue, we have the activity in the last seven days of Bitcoin holders. Are they profitable? Are they unprofitable? Let's go find out. So what we what we can see here is whenever this gets to very, very high levels, typically that's when a market correction occurs, and typically whenever this gets to very, very low levels, that's typically when the market goes the other way. So basically, the market's going to cycle from extreme euphoria to extreme pain, through our time, and this is an indicator that can help us locate those times of extreme pain and extreme euphoria. So if you look here, we can see that just about here, August 5th, and just about here, traders were doing quite well. Many of them who had bought were in a profit. This occurred at this price point here, and price did not go any higher. And this occurred here. Um, this occurred August 5th. And August 5th, August 6th, price really struggled and did not go any higher. You can see that made a top as well. If we look at another right here, uh, let's go actually look at something when a lot of traders were hurt. I think this is pretty obvious, the most painful that, that had happened throughout this entire chart. Many traders who had opened positions in the last seven days were holding positions at a loss. So that occurred right here at the market bottom. And this would have been a good, a, probably a good time to have bought right there. But this is not what we're looking at. We're looking at the difference between the two. And down here, what you're looking at is what can show us the difference between the two. Now, let's go look at Bitcoin price versus the short-term, long-term difference. Whenever the blue is negative, this blue area or this blue line is negative, what that means is that the short-term is above the long-term, above the medium-term here. Let me show that March 17th here. Here you can see about March 16th, March 17th, that the blue is above the orange, basically saying that in the last seven days, traders are more profitable than traders in the last 60 days. Now, when this occurs, this is typically a sign that the market's about to fall. Um, when many traders in the last seven days have come into profit relative to traders in the last 60 days, that's a sign the market's probably going to fall. And a scale that I like to use is a 0.1 difference. So to do that, I'm just going to draw a little helpful thing here just to give me some horizontal lines. Now, let's go look at each time that this 0.1 threshold had been crossed. Now, when this goes very, very positive, that means that many more 60-day traders are more profitable 
than the seven day traders, than those who had bought Bitcoin the last seven days. Bit traders who had bought Bitcoin the last six days are more profitable than traders who had, who had bought in the last seven days. That occurs here. And we can see that, that when that point one was uh, crossed, price was about at 9.1, 9.2, and price just skyrockets and go much, goes much, much higher. Another time that this was crossed was right here. And what happened to the Bitcoin price? Well, this was when the Bitcoin price was about 8K, 8.1K, and price stalled and then went down to about, what was that, 7. Point, it says 7.893, but it went lower than that. I think around 77, 7600. So had we shorted at the 8100 uh, and closed at about 7700, that would have been a nice profit. And the only reason we'd be doing that is because many seven day holders are now more profitable than the 60 day holders and then price went down. So another one that had happened up above or below 0.1 threshold is here, we can see. And when that happened, uh, Bitcoin really struggled to do anything. Bitcoin struggled to go higher. Bitcoin ended up actually going a lot lower. So 7,600, if you had the opportunity to short about 76, 74, maybe 7,300, price goes down to about the uh, 6,000s, so 6,800. That could have been a potential trade as well. And how would you have known that this would have been a good time to, to exit? Well, that's where this comes in. You can look at Bitcoin goes down, right? I think we can all agree to that. And the MVRV between the seven day and the 60 day goes up. Now, well, what, what does that mean? What is that trying to tell us? Well, let's go take a look at the actual values during this time. What time was this? November 28th. November 28th, uh, 2019, of course. So November 28th, 2019, what ends up happening is that the seven day holders become more profitable than the 60 day holders and that difference increases. What that means is that there are a lot of new uh, Bitcoin positions open. Now, if Bitcoin was to was to fall, a lot of those new openers, you know, might sell. And we can see that that happens here. Now, specifically what this means is that there is an increase, which means that there are now um, slightly more 60 day profitable traders than seven day traders from before as you can see here. Because we go from a difference of about negative 0.12 to a difference of about negative 0.1, as you can see here. So the blue and the red become a little bit closer. And this could have been a sign for us to exit. Now, other signs, probably the better ones would have been here, you know, uh, we cross over the 0.1 threshold here, buying here would have been phenomenal. And then just kind of, if we were to do this, we'd probably just want to wait for this to rise even higher. And then that might be, uh, uh, or pardon me, rise, uh, uh, fall a little bit lower. And that's probably when it, we would want to sell. And when this does fall a bit lower, maybe that is a sign to sell. And then probably the most violent time is here. You can see that just about the same time price falls as this uh, MVRV uh, difference actually gets very, very negative, which is telling me that a lot of the people who had traded in the last 60 days and bought Bitcoin are losing, and they're losing um, quite quicker than those who had traded in the last seven days, as you can see here. And this is the time we want to probably sell, as you can see. Now, I'm also going to show you guys a little bit more. Oops, there was my pop filter. Hopefully that didn't break anyone's headphones there. Um, I don't know if you guys even heard that, but the, the pop filter just capitulated. Interesting word, capitulated. Okay, uh, this is the 30 day versus the 365. Same blue is short term and uh, this guy is long term, the red, red slash orange. And you can kind of see what's going on here. Where, let me show you what I'm talking about, where typically when this is increasing or when this is a bit high, that's typically a good time to buy. When this is decreasing or getting a bit lower, that's typically a better time to sell. So something like, you know, here could have been a time to buy, you know, increasing, increase, increasing. Then when it starts to decrease, this could have been a time to sell right there. Um, I do prefer the shorter time frames, but this is one you can look at as well. Now, what we have over here is the histogram of most popular values and difference. We can see just how often any value is hit. So, you know, it's pretty rare that we had a difference up there, and it's very rare that we had a difference somewhere around there. So this is gonna tell you what's normal and really what's not that normal. 
and that's the histogram, which I'll show you here, right? So some people like to use the MVRV difference. If that confuses you, if any, if some of that doesn't make sense, what I'd also recommend is you don't have to use the difference between the two values. You could just do this and just use one of them. And if you can find a good way to gain an edge this way, which I think you absolutely can, then this can be a great way to trade. You know, when we see a bunch of traders jump into profit just out of like that, then this is typically where market tops happen. And we see a bunch of traders just kind of lose money or a lot of traders are now not in profit. This is typically a time when the market goes back up. Now, another time uh, here. Yeah, so it's typically best, I would say, to buy when any individual MVRV is very, very low and best to sell when any individual MVRV is very, very high. You can do this. You can buy before euphoria. You're buying during panic or buying during pain, and you're selling during euphoria. And that's really what every trader is told to do because it's typically the most profitable um, way to trade. And if you think that you're ready for it and you want to go beyond just any individual MVRV, then you can look at the MVRV difference. And this difference is very helpful in showing us, hey, how are the short-term traders faring relative to the longer-term traders? So those who have bought in the last 365 days versus those who have bought in the last 30 days. Now again, when this is very, very, very negative, what that means is that many newer traders, the 30-day traders, those who have uh, traded Bitcoin in the last 30 days and bought Bitcoin, are becoming more profitable than those who had traded in the last 365. For me, when more newer traders are profitable than uh, traders who had traded a long time ago, that's typically bearish. Other people might see this differently, but I would say on a longer time frame difference, any cross of the zero line could be assigned to buy or sell. You know, this could be assigned to sell, this could be assigned to buy, this could be assigned to sell. And then if we use something like this, any, any crossing of any kind of threshold that's important to you, such as the point one, could also be an indication to buy or sell. So Sandbase Sentiment is a phenomenal website. I will be covering them a lot more often. I might go back to MVRV. I might actually even pair MVRV with other indicators as well. Um, but if you guys have any more questions about the calculation of this indicator, the interpretation of this indicator, you can contact the team at Sentiment or you can contact me from private message. I typically prefer that over YouTube comment um, because I am probably going to respond to someone who emails me or shoots me a message on Discord, but I might not respond if you're uh, shooting me a message on YouTube. With that, happy trading and go take a look at MVRV.